as the book of Samuel says in the Bible, Netzach Yisrael lo yishaker. The eternity of Israel will not falter. Uh, this is uh, Benjamin, the Prime Minister, and that is Benjamin Netanyahu. We used a selective word uh, to, from the Bible to justify atrocity against the Palestinians and Lebanese. But in this video, you will find that Barbados Prime Minister extraordinarily uh, replied to Netanyahu for, you, for selective use of Bible uh, in UN. Now, I want you to listen to this video. And before that, my name is Golden Boy. I want you to listen to this video up to the end. How the P Prime Minister of Barbados replied to Benjamin. Alter. It is the same Bible that tells us in the stories of the Old Testament much which has guided many people across this world. But when we turn from the Old Testament to the New Testament, it is Romans that says to us, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, not any country, not any human being. So that the Bible can't be used as a convenient aid when it suits us and rejected when it doesn't. Mr. President, above all else, we need a global reset on peace. There needs to be global peace. And those of us who are old enough would have recognized that there are peaks and valleys as it relates to this issue of conflict. There are few areas where the world is more in need of the United Nations acting as the United Nations to secure the objectives of the Charter than in the area of the peace and security. The silence that has engulfed Sudan is unacceptable and may well be rooted in the racism that the world still carries as a badge of honor from the victories of the last great war of the World War II. The actions in Myanmar cannot continue. Ukraine has sucked more oxygen out of the global community and the global financial system than any of us can appropriately accept at that very time when the world needs to be applying its resources and efforts to fight in the greatest crisis known to mankind. And the spread of the war from Gaza to the consequences in the West Bank to now clearly what is happening in Lebanon as we speak with Israel, all of these are but the tip of an iceberg of death, violence, and instability, and robs the global community of oxygen and resources at the very time when we need it most in a strategic way. We all know, as students of history, that even the longest war in history came to an end. These wars, yes, they too will come to an end. But the question is when? and at what cost, and without much loss of life, with how many children not being able to be either given the chance to live, or will now live with memories of war that will affect their every action for the next 60, 70, 80 years of their lives. Innocent people are paying the price with the one thing that is theirs to give, and they don't give it willingly. It is their life. Unless we address the root causes of these wars, one by one, and the manners in which they are being sustained and financed, we will never, never know anything else other than war and rumors of war in these theaters. The transmittal of these scenes of horror in real time into people's bedrooms, into people's living rooms, will trigger two extreme reactions neither of which are acceptable to us in the third decade of the 21st century. We will either get the desensitizing of ordinary people to the loss of lives, especially those of innocent children and women on the one hand, or we will get on the other hand the anger and inclination for vengeance that it spawns necessarily. 
We need peace. And it cannot be too difficult for us to work for peace. It is the same Bible that tells us in the stories of the Old Testament much which has guided many people across this world. But when we turn from the Old Testament to the New Testament, it is Romans that says to us, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, not any country, not any human being. So that the Bible can't be used as a convenient aid when it suits us and rejected when it doesn't. In the midst of this maelstrom, we were very clear. My country took the step this year of recognizing and establishing diplomatic relations with the state of Palestine, in spite of having supported a two-state solution since 1969. And we did this because it is clear to us that the state and people of Palestine, human beings, are entitled to full recognition by integration into and support from the international community. The Charter does not say we the people, with the exception of any one group from any one part of the world. We join with others, therefore, in congratulating the State of Palestine in taking their seat among the United Nations member states as they did on the 10th of September of this year. And let me be clear, we condemn the actions of Hamas on October 7th, but we equally and strongly deplore the humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza, which is the result of the disproportionate use of force by Israel. There is no justification for it. And that is why treaties exist governing the rules of engagement for war. Because we as human beings learnt better and know better and committed to better. A two-state solution, no matter how elusive it may appear to be now, is the only answer. And I've said already this week, that we have known difficult battles in mankind's history. But when we were in it, we didn't think we could achieve it. But we did. We abolished slavery. We removed apartheid in South Africa. These diff battles are not beyond our creativity, our capacity, and our resilience to resolve them. Similarly, we insist that the killing in Ukraine really has to stop. The people of Ukraine must be allowed to live within the internationally recognized boundaries of their state in peace and freedom from the threat of use or force. And as I said, it is sucking too much oxygen out of the global financial system and countries that should be the beneficiary of aid are being told that they may have to wait in the interest of the defense of others because of war. I say to us truly, there has to be a singular commitment to build a peace, truly. Mr. President, my own region has not escaped the scourge of instability and violence. The Americas do not constitute today a fiat of war. But we are today witnessing, for some years now, an unprecedented escalation in the number and caliber of assault weapons which are finding themselves in the hands of criminals who are wreaking havoc on the legal systems and our societies, particularly in the small island developing states of the Caribbean and indeed in the wider states of Central and Latin America. This scourge caused by guns manufactured in the United States of America primarily also requires a fundamental reset. The right of persons to bear arms in countries not engaged in military conflict should not be an opening to accept as legitimate the presence of assault weapons in countries. It is simply not right. There is no place for assault weapons in our societies. Hello guys, once more, welcome back to this channel. Uh, my name is Golden Boy, and I believe that you have watched the video up to the end. Now I want to quote something from Nelson Mandela. He said that when two neighboring countries fight each other, just know that United States of America visited one. 
So you can you can give an example or a sample from uh, Zamb Zambia and Zimbabwe. You'll find that these people are really really fighting. Now when you deep you dig deep into this situation, you'll find that the US wants to build a base in Zambia and now they are in loggerheads with the neighbor neighbor as uh, that is Zimbabwe. So it is just the same same issues that um mostly uh, who came to speak immediately after Benjamin left he left no stone and turned in exposing the uh, Benjamin and expressing a solidarity with the Palestinians now I'll, I want you guys to listen and listen very careful that not a single word she said was defamatory offensive or anything of the sort she speaks with grace and compassion, yet with an iron stem tone that the world needs to hear. She spoke the cold, hard truth. Now, peace above all, I am from this. Now, this is a, just a number one global power that has spoken like she's, she has a lot about this world. Now, guys, I didn't have much to talk about. What Miyamoto talked about are just enough and... I hope you can consume them positively. And if you have a negative, then comment below. Otherwise, see in another episode. I hope this video was educative and very, very uh, entertaining. See you. Bye.